Hello darlings and welcome to a brand new episode in the A to Z Guide series to being a creative genius. My name is Heidi Hinder Chadwick and it's really lovely to, to be back after a long hiatus for a thousand million reasons. Actually one of them pretty much to do with what I would like to, uh, to speak about today. So today's episode is going to be all about C for chaos. Ah, <sighs> chaos. Because we're in it. We're in chaos. <laughs> right now, we are living through an extraordinary time of chaos. And this is on a global scale. It's our collective chaos. Often, when we are in chaos, it is our own possibly personal times of chaos that we have to negotiate and deal with. And we all do so in many different ways. And in the normal times, whatever that means anymore, um, we will have all had these periods of our life that have thrown us into this realm of chaos. So firstly, I'd just like to say that if you're new to this, then welcome. It's really lovely to, to, to have you on board and to share something that may be or maybe not be useful for you. If you do find this is helpful, it's interesting, it's given you even a tiny little seed of something to, to plant deep inside and to offer into your life, then it'd be amazing if you were to like this video, if you could share it, and if you haven't done so already, then subscribe to my channel. We can't live our lives without chaos because chaos is actually life. Life is chaos, isn't it? It's this massive great unknown. The only bits that have a certainty to them are the, if you like, the bookends, which is being born and death. Those bits, once you've done the being born bit, which you've done because you're here and, you know, I'm talking to you, you're listening to this, you're in the world. The only other certainty is death, which is a whole other realm to go exploring in, which we're not going to go into today. But the bit in the middle is the life bit, the living bit is essentially it's chaos. It's this great mystery. It's this massive unknown. And the phrase, life happens while we're busy making other plans, <laughs> which I don't know about you, but it happens a lot, doesn't it? It's really happening right now in these times that we are living in. So let's uh, explore a little bit about chaos and how we can navigate this chaos in a wise way to bring us more into an aligned way of being with and dancing with an unknown that is unprecedented and particular to the lives that we are living right now. So in a way, how can we still fully show up in our lives as life in service, being useful, being able to be there for our families, being able to offer something that may be beautiful and useful and um, being a part of, of, of life, which we are all in. So chaos, I would liken chaos to a twister, you know, a massive twister, and which we, you know, if you've ever seen these, they're extraordinary, aren't they? And just bonkers. And we're swirling around when we're hit by chaos. But in the center, there is this still point, a still point in the turning of the world. I think that's T.S. Eliot or a kind of T.S. Eliot-ish uh, phrase. And many of us perhaps have a practice, have something that gives us a strengthening of the muscle to keep us keep coming back to and to keep us and to stay a little longer each time perhaps in that still place in the very center of the chaos and in that place there's breath there's a sense of relief 
You can suddenly be like, oh, here I am. This is down and this is up and these are my surroundings. There is a sense of space in order to be able to respond. And also we can see, we can see the swirling of the chaos around us. We're not consumed and overwhelmed by it. And it's interesting that we're practiced because our practices, whatever they are, maybe it's meditation, yoga, it's dance, it's art, it's walking, it's gardening, whatever is your particular practice, it doesn't have to be something formal, it's a practice because we have to keep doing it, it's like a muscle. And the more we keep doing it, we begin to develop something called uh, resilience, a creative resilience of spirit. And it's an extraordinary thing that, and I'm sure many of us may be able to resonate with this, but in one of the many, many paradoxes of life, it's only when we have to go up against the chaos in our lives that we realize actually how resilient we are, how much strength we have available to us. And it is. That, that strength is it's just unbelievable. And often in our lives, and I suppose particularly for most of us, the lives that we've lived in in the period of history up to now, we've never been that tested, um, not on a level that maybe we are experiencing right now. Death is something that tests that level of resilience, grief, uh, losing somebody, huge changes that happens to us, something that threatens our very life, our very existence and so on. Discovering our resilience that lies within us is a little bit like how an earth creates a diamond in a way, you know, these, these external forces and pressure to create something absolutely unbreakable, actually, because that is what we begin to discover when we are forced to dig deep, to excavate, to, to, to ground our feet so strongly into the ground, to push our roots so deeply into the earth, find this place that is unbreakable, unshakable, and solid within us. And as I say, we, we all have this. So this is something that in times of chaos, we have an opportunity to in a way, well, we do have a choice, actually. I will touch upon that in a moment. But that is one choice to, to rise up and to, to meet the, 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 the forces of this chaos that is happening within us and all around us. And talking of um, grounding our feet and digging deep and um, really feeling our roots drawing down brings us right back to nature and Surely, if anything, it is nature that shows us how extraordinary and how natural chaos is, how it is a part of life. Life is always, to me, the same as creativity. They're the same thing, they're the same energy. You know, we look at the extraordinariness of nature dealing with storms and floods and fires, and there is this huge devastation and there's also this extraordinary, again, resilience to renew. I find it fascinating this time of the year. It's just absolutely stunning. The springtime is that time of renewal. And even just looking at a tree, a tree that is bare, that seems like it's dead. And then suddenly you have this blossom that seems almost like they're made out of um, tissue paper. <laughs> I've been thinking that this week when I've been on my, my walks. So innocent, so fresh, so tender, being born out of seemingly death. And this happens every single year. And it's a huge risk nature takes to be reborn every single year because a storm can come along and destroy, a flood can come along and wash away, a fire can just burn to the ground. And yet nature doesn't go, no, nope, no. Nope. It continues to research and to be resurrected, if you like, from 
destruction and chaos is the realm of both creativity and destruction. So there's these polarities here and they go on with us as well. I'm sure we're all aware, particularly at times like this, particularly when chaos strikes, that we can, and I certainly for myself, we can veer like a seesaw between this extraordinary place of creativity and responsiveness and aliveness and this other place of destruction, self-destruction and being pulled towards those things that numb us out, that destroy our ability to feel life moving, moving us and moving through us. And those forces will always be doing this because that's the nature of this duality of life that we're living in. In the dance practice, that has been a big part of my life for the last 15 years, five rhythms dance. The realm of chaos is also the realm of deep sadness. It's the realm of grief. And, you know, really, <laughs> pretty much all of us don't really want to go and meet grief. We have a very strange way of dealing with grief in our Western world, don't we? And grief is extraordinary because it's, it's like an ocean. Sometimes it seems like an endless ocean and it's vast and it's wide and it's deep. And grief contains everything. Those of you and probably most of us will have experienced grief in some form, especially as we've become, you know, we made it to adulthood. As well as holding sadness also contains rage and, and fury and anger and fear and terror, confusion and everything. All of the feels, if you like, are contained in grief. And just like an ocean, it seems almost unsurmountable or that we're going to be drowned by this. I do believe that the reason for this is because we've not been taught or trained or shown how to, how to meet grief. And I do really do feel when chaos strikes that we are forced to meet grief in a way that is not written down in an instruction manual. It's grief is messy and it's different for each of us and it's unique and it doesn't abide by any particular timeline. But the thing about grief is that if we have the courage to meet it, the extraordinary thing, and it's another paradox, is that right at the bottom of the well of grief, or the ocean of grief, strangely enough, lies joy lies our ability to really be with our joy and celebration. I'm not talking about happiness here, which comes and goes and is very dependent, isn't it, happiness on external factors. This joy found underneath the well of grief is, um, it's, it's who we are actually, um, and it doesn't change. It's always something present and again, is part of that unshakable solid center, just like that center of the twister. And from the experience of the dance practice that I mentioned, I'm going to offer two ways to, to, to play with this chaos when it arises. One way is to become it, to become chaos, to, to really be it and to let it take over, if you like, your uh, your whole experience to let yourself shake and just move the body in a chaotic way and to really become an expression of this chaos. So in a weird way, instead of letting it overpower you and you drown, be overwhelmed by it, you rise up to become it, you meet it. So it doesn't take power away from you you become empowered by allowing yourself to, to, to be this chaos itself. And when we allow ourselves to say yes to, be really open to any of these emotional states that we fear and let that move through us and let it move us, there is an alchemy that begins to happen. There's not this resistance anymore. Actually, often what we meet when grief arises or fear or anger is what's in the way or resistance to simply allowing this force field of energy, and it really is a force, and right now maybe the strongest force you've ever really met, is to allow it. 
Um, and the other way is to surrender, is to let go. So rather than becoming it and meeting that energy with that same energy within you, it's to almost like you open your arms and go, okay, that you float on that water instead and you allow it to in a way shatter you grief shatters us it's we don't want to be shattered do we <laughs> no one willingly does however much we put our hands up to go oh yes they want to be awakened and woke and be able to meet all these places there is a certain level of them um death actually being willing to die letting some parts of us go but as i mentioned these are strong forces, this life force that is moving through us. And if left untethered, all of this energy, it can destroy us or take us towards that, that side of the seesaw into destruction. So the first thing that we really need is a sense of ground, a strong container to allow this energy to move into. This ground essentially is, is this. It's this because this is what we're experiencing our life in is this body. So any practice of embodiment, whatever that is for you, it's dancing, whether it's yoga, whether it's walking, whether it's running, whether it's whatever it is, is I think pretty much one of the essential things that we need when we're experiencing chaos in our life. Otherwise we're gone. We're gone and that feeling of lost is 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 terrifying. So we need this ground, particularly when the ground all around us is changing and disappearing. And the other thing that we need is to become aware of control. Now, I would raise more hands if I had them to say that I have lived my life pretty much as a control freak, controlling everything. Some of this I've been quite aware of. Other aspects of this I have become more illuminated towards in recent times. Quite shocking to discover I want to control pretty much everything and also in a weird way quite humorous to see that in just the blatant lunacy <laughs> of believing that I have any kind of control whatsoever but it's a damn hard one to um, to let go of. Now the thing about control is that we all have this part of us, the control part of us, and control itself is actually, it's a bloody good part to have because it does help to manage our energy. It's a good manager. If it has a project to do, it helps us to do that. It's very good at structure. It's probably got a, a clipboard that's very neatly done and a ring binder, obviously. And it just, it helps us to give a frame for our lives, really, to allow the energy to move in a way that is essential and aligned with who we are. However, the kind of more shadowy side of control, or the more unhealthy aspect of control, we all have these basically. It's interesting at this time to notice when we're in chaos, where do we start to control more? And one of these ways might be we toughen up, we, we armor up, we become defensive, not going to feel all of this, certainly not going to feel this grief that might be going on inside. Control is very much in cahoots with, with fear, which is pretty much underneath um, a lot of all these other emotions. It's our very basic need to survive and to protect. What is it protecting? It's protecting this idea of who we are and of how life should be. Another thing about control in that more unbalanced aspect is that it's very much aligned with that destructive aspect of chaos because too much control literally stops the flow of life. It stops that flexibility which is our true nature. It stops the ebb and flow of life, a bit like breath ebbing and flowing it stops our ability to respond to each moment of life and it literally begins to constrict and contract and to squash and to squish just ourself and our it stops life basically it can stop life so we end up almost like being like the living dead 
moving through life as the living dead and then there's no joy available there's no inspiration inspiration taking breath in allowing it to move us and there is certainly no play play is a very important aspect of creativity creativity is the opposite to control whereas control constrict and contracts creativity opens and expands whereas control is rigid and inflexible creativity is adaptable and spontaneous creativity as i mentioned earlier is our life force that's moving us and it is literally our, our nature it's untamable it's ungraspable it's actually got nothing to do with us our creativity and it is wild Creativity is our wildness, it's our wild nature. For me, it's literally the ability to be in a place of freedom and response all the time. Now, I'm certainly not in that space all the time whatsoever, but for me, that's what creativity is. So we're living as an expression of life, however that is in any moment. The flow of creativity as life is both profoundly beautiful, moving, touching, connected, and painfully, heartbreakingly brutal. It has to be, remember, it's life and death, it's all of it. So right now, how do we meet this? What do we do about this chaos that we find ourselves in? There's no way to avoid <coughs> chaos, especially when it is here. We are invited instead to lean in, to meet it, to really anchor our feet into the ground and to meet this force, to listen, to let it spin us out, to let ourselves get messy, to allow it to undo some of the controls. So for some of us, that could mean letting ourselves fall apart, go a little crazy, get messy, have a little breakdown, breaking down of the old structure in us. A little breakthrough, break away, break open. If life is chaos, what if we turn towards life as a lover? I've talked about this before. And embrace this lover. I don't know about you, but, you know, trying to control relationships doesn't work. <laughs> so instead, how do we open to go, okay, I can't tame you. I have no idea how to do this. So let me dance with you. Let me move with you. Make art out of this place. Allow yourself to let go a little, a little, a little more of the ways in which you have placed this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how it should be. And let yourself grieve for those expectations which are being shattered. Allow yourself to feel the disappointment. Allow yourself to feel the helplessness of these controls that gave the illusion that you were secure and safe when that place is only available to us inside. And I say all of this from a place of having experienced this myself and have gone through this journey before, recently, probably will many other times as well. Essentially, it's seeing if it's possible to have the courage to let it shatter shatter you there is a death here and after death there is this rebirth that always is there always is so the thing is control limits us in so many ways we've limited our lives in so many ways we don't realize that we've done that and we haven't done that really intentionally because the truth is we are actually limitless creativity the force of creativity is limitless as is life as is love and the other thing I just wanted to say here is that we've got it wrong, haven't we? We've, we thought that we were the ones in control. <laughs> we thought we were the ones in control and we're really not. And sometimes we are really shown that we are not, that we cannot control anything that is outside of us, nothing. The only thing that we have any control over is how we respond, how we choose to meet life when everything that we once thought of 
and new and depended upon to give us a sense of security is fragmenting and disappearing. It's terrifying and it's scary and this is just one opinion or one offering um, connected to, to, to living a life of your, the fullest life of being in alignment because oh yeah that's one more thing I wanted to add because what if instead of pinning our control of life onto lots of external factors what if instead we began to live more from a place of aligning with who we are what feels right for us for listening more deeply for responding and for following what we value I really feel that that's actually a much more liberating and beautiful and honest and authentic compass to move through life. If we are able to ride this wave of chaos, then we have a choice maybe to direct this energy, to use it, to express it, whether it's to make art. I mean, chaos is the realm of the artist. It has to be. Whether it's to find a way to be of service, maybe that is through your art, or maybe it's simply by being able to show up for your family, your friends, your loved ones, your community, for the world in a much clearer way. Maybe we can use this energy to be useful. I feel that useful, being useful is an extraordinary way to be in life, whatever that means to you. Because when we do so, we are still plugged into life. We can still experience feeling an aliveness and a flow, a joy, a playfulness, even as we are twirling around in this twister of chaos. So I don't know if anything was of use or useful to you in this, this video that I'm sharing. Do let me know. And I'm going to be offering some online sessions, workshops, using creativity as the tool to reconnect to that sense of alignment, to play and dance with chaos and to, to take life as your lover. You can go to my website to find out more information or maybe you want to work with me as a creativity coach right now all of my work is around alignment and expanding and values living as who you are i hope that you are safe and that you are well and that you continue just to thank your breath and to follow those little sparks of aliveness that are within you that you might find possibly as you move through your day they will be the things that sustain you in this chaos thank you so much Till next time.